go. Okay. I'd like to call this workshop to order. It's going to discuss the town 2021 highway budget. So at this time, please rise and we'll pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <coughs> I want to read some introductory comments here. The tentative highway 2021 budget workshop on October 8th will cover the highway revenue and expense items. The changes being made will be incorporated in the 2021 preliminary budget, which will have another town board meeting and a public hearing before being adopted, usually at the November 10th town board meeting. The 2021 tentative budget, as presented, has included two new, uh, two big new expenses. The bond payment for the two new purchased snowplow trucks was $33,702 for next year. That's principal and interest. The library 414 levy of $115,000 was added within the town budget instead of being below the line as was done in the 2020 budget. To help reduce the property tax increase in 2021 due to these two new additions to the budget and the normal inflation of expenses, $374,000 was moved from the general fund expended balance and 100,000 was moved from the highway unexpended balance. These movements from the expended funds balances also help to replace the reduced revenues from sales tax, mortgage tax, court fines, town building permit fees, and possible 20% reduction in New York state funds for CHIPS, PAVE New York, AIM, and extreme weather recovery to the town. The 2021 tentative budget as presented shows about a six cents per thousand dollars increase in the tax rate to $2.24 per thousand, which is a 2.7% increase of assessment. And we, will, we are over the New York State tax cap. The tax cap was 2.25% in 2019 2.07% in 2020, and now we are also able, uh, and we were also able to include the unused tax cap saving from 2020. The new tax, the, the new 1.56 tax cap allowed a tax increase for 2021 of $55,068. Today we are $20,864 over the tax cap. Spending more over the tax cap amount will increase the tax rate. Next Thursday, October 15th at 7 p.m., we will be doing the General Fund 2021 tentative tax a budget workshop. In addition, there are many other high cost projects which are being proposed by town board members and others, which if approved may also increase the tax rate. These additions will be discussed and can be added at the end of the general fund workshop. So that's just a little preamble to start it off. So the process normally is <clears throat> we go through the tentative budget, essentially line by line. And this is only the highway part. So that's the one that has the D in front of the numbers on the left column. And some of the numbers, for example, like in the pay for the highway people are dictated by the CSEA contract. So we're not going to revisit them at all because that's it. Now we can revisit if somebody says, hey, why do we have these people there? That's a different, that's a quantity of people, but not the dollars per hour. And we go through the expense part, and then we'll go through the revenue part at the end. And when we're done, we'll wrap it up, and that'll be the input for the preliminary budget. Uh, we have to stay until we're all done, because 
we have no lag time. We can't carry this over because we're, next week we're doing the other one and we got to put this stuff together into the budget so that we can keep on schedule. So at this time, uh, I'm going through and I look at the regular pay. Does anybody want to comment on it? That's on pages one and two. Uh, Todd's here, the highway superintendent, to discuss any comments or issues or something you have, forgetting about the dollars, but number of people or who the people are, or whatever. They're all identified there. Okay. Seeing. Do you want to? Do you want to say something? Oh, okay. I couldn't see. I was looking at my stuff here. You might as well just stay there, and then you can just okay. keep talking. On, <laughs> on page two there, there is uh, nothing in the budget for summer employees, part-time employees for the summer at all. Right. On page two, it says seasonal uh, right. employees for the summer, summer laborers highway part-time. The hours, the weeks, the salaries there, but there's nothing budgeted in no. there. You didn't give me a number. We have laborers up in the column above. Okay. Well, last year we had budgeted 7680. What was that, Dean, for last year? Last year we had 7680. 7680 for last year. Yeah, that was uh, 2020. 16 uh, weeks per year at a rate of $12. Um, sorry to correct you, Dean. I'm looking at the 2020. I have 8384. Uh, maybe I have the wrong one. This one says the adopted budget detail of 1113. Yeah, I have 1112. Great. <laughs> Okay. Uh, summer work, I had uh, 8,384 was in the budget. For 2021? For 2020. For 2020. And that was one person 16 hours per week at $13.10 an hour. Well, I'm asking for one person for 32 hours a week for 16 weeks at a pay rate of six, uh, $14 an hour. Please. So you just want where the zero is you want a one put in. one one employee please no this is this is for the summer this is for the high just for the highway for the summer yeah seasonal non seasonal yeah, yeah. non non-union employee seasonal 32 like, hours a like week. a flag man or something yes. like that yeah if we're oil and stone and black top and or major storms tree storms uh flooding or something like that yeah. That'll come out with seven thousand one hundred and sixty-eight dollars. What was the number you came out there, Ray? I'm sorry. Seven thousand one hundred and sixty-eight. <clears throat> the winter is in the back section under item four. Okay, we do we agree to that or I agree to it. No, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't, then why mention it? Well, I just want. Did we lose the last? Did we use it this year? Oh yeah. Yes. So then we had to count for it. Well, we yeah. So it's actually less than last year then because it was 83, was it 80? Last year it was 40 hours a week for 16 oh, weeks. Oh, four, that's, okay, so that's. Yeah, so we're going, if we did 40, then they're considered full-time with benefits and everything else. That's why there's a 32. 
like I said, this is just for like flagmen and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's not somebody full time, full time, you know, every single day. Mm -hmm. Yes, this year we used $8,314. In that line item, I don't know if it was one people, two people, don't know. But that's what we did this year. So it's cons relatively consistent with the 71. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll make that change. Do you need winter? Winter's in the another line item. Yeah. Winter's in the back, yeah, under item four. Okay, the next next item comes up under equipment, sign plotter to replace the old one. <coughs> the old that's, one. that's in desperate need of repair. That's why we put it, that in it, there. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, it's outdated. The, yeah. the computer program is... The software doesn't match it anymore. It's like we previous be, Windows 95. Yeah. Yeah, it's really outdated. So you can't do a conversion like you would like to. And it needs mechanical repairs so we make a lot of our own signs all our roadside signs we make mm. and we don't have to go out and buy them and stuff mm -hmm. put signs on trucks or if we need special road signs you know uh, we have uh, salt or sand or gravel or whatever is happening so it saves a lot of time and it's quick we can do it People are trained and we make them out very quickly. So that's in the budget already, but I'm just calling your attention in case you missed it. That was all. Uh, Todd, because you had, when we spoke, you had a different amount that you were looking for, for the sign plotter. <clears throat> so what's, what's the difference with that, the, the 4,000 to the other number you put in there? Yeah, no, that, the other, that's, that's the ballpark number, the one that we're looking at right now. Okay, the 4,000? Yeah. The 4,000, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Talking with, uh, who's the IT guy? Fred. Fred, Fred. <clears throat> okay, so then we'll skip down to the top of page three. Um, the... The, the the one just while we're talking about the roadside signs just to give you a feel in the middle of that top section it says wood signs and metal signs the wood signs we have a hundred one thousand five hundred dollars that buys wood what six yes. inch now yeah and paint okay Look at the metal signs. You've got 3,500, and that buys what about six or ten signs? Uh, yeah, six to eight signs. That's DOT approved with the. That's because they're metal and, and, and sacred reflection and everything yep. else. So you can see the kind of savings we are generating, and our signs, even though they're wood, are legal. Mm. So it, we're getting a benefit out of that sign out of that sign maker. And we've used it for years. So I, I didn't mean to detract anything, but we were talking about signs, so I just thought I'd interject that right then and there. Uh, does, do you have any question about any of the other lines up in there? Um. The, the only other one which I didn't put in, we had it in in prior years, is the very last one lease UHF radios. Uh, the county is going to UHF from VHF. Very low frequency to ultra high frequency. Uh, you can't convert the radios. Our existing radios are pretty old. Sure. And, and uh, coverage is not good through the area. So why don't you just give them just a summary, but we'll make the decision of what it is, but what radios mean at this point? Right, right now, we're operating off of a low-band system, okay? Um, the county and everybody else around us and all the communication companies are all high-band. Everybody's switching over from it because you can go tower to tower to tower. With the low-band here, we got dead spots and stuff like that. That's why the fire departments and everybody else switched over to the high-band. 
I want to switch over to the high band. I was trying to do a shared service grants with Molinero, but with the COVID that got canceled, and then Sue Serino and a couple other politicians I tried to reach out to to get grants, but with the COVID we couldn't. I want to switch over to the high band. Um, it's 27 radios. That's for the equipment, the trucks and stuff, and that's taking out some of the radios from the winter to the summer vehicles, swapping them back and forth. So it's 27 uh, mobile radios, four portable radios, and one base station here with an antenna to switch over to the high band. Um, it's for the benefit of the town. The one company I was looking at was my Comco, and they have towers from Albany to New York City that we can bounce off of if we go through those guys. They're on state bid. Most of these companies, the big companies that I've been talking to and dealing with is uh, Nicomco, uh, A1 Communications, and I think it's Goose Town Communications is the other one. They're out of Westchester, Putnam area. Um, we, we do need these radios because, like I said, Sometimes in the middle of winter, these storms, we got no communication. We're, we're trying to use cell phones, and you know how that is. That's just like trying to use the two-way radios here in town. With the high band, with towers bouncing off of these other towers, if we go this way with the high band, hopefully we'll get better service, better coverage, and everything. Some of these radios, the newer radios that we bought recently, we can trade those in. The older radios, I mean, you're talking, they're over 16, 20 years old. These radios are, they're, they're low band. Nobody's got them. They're a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can pick them up basically at the dollar store right now. I mean, that's how cheap and these radios are. So that's what I'm trying to look at right now. Um, ballpark, it's between 70 to $110,000. That's just ballpark. That's just getting the radios, trying to, the ones that we have, um, trade those in. Um, there's only like a handful, I think five or six or something that might be able to uh, value-wise to get some money back out of it. The rest of them are basically scrapped to uh, to yeah. make it work. Yeah, we could put them on auction if somebody buys yeah, them. Yeah, if somebody wants them. We get them. Yeah. But that's one thing I didn't um, put in the budget there. Because I was trying to get numbers and everything else in time. and so, We'll further discuss that one at yeah. uh, there's next a, if, meeting. Yeah, if we don't under buy them, there's options for uh, leasing also. You can lease the radios and the mobiles and stuff like that. And what was those numbers? Do you remember those numbers off the top of your head on the leasing, Todd? No. No? No, I don't want to give you a false number. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I just don't remember off the top of my head what it was. It, it was like thirty or 40000 a, a, a year for five years you had to lease them. So it yeah. came out, you might as well buy them for the money you're spending. Yeah. It was about the same maintenance and install, installation reprogramming. Okay, no, no questions further on that. No. Next one is improvements item 1A. This is essentially improvements to the roads, and you can describe some of these. The new item is uh, guide rails for the most part. The, the guide rails on there, you see it's uh, 10,500. The improvements in the blacktop, and I did over on Pumpkin uh, Lane from Shablo, uh, roughly to Maple Lane, that guardrail now has to be raised. That's why I had to put that in there to come up into uh, DOT compliance. So that's why that's in there. And the, the figure the was roughly 3,700 feet of guardrail. So what we're doing is we're using the same rails, taking the post out and driving those deeper and raising that up. If you know, if you follow me, those posts are roughly three, four foot in the ground. We're taking the rails out, the post out. The posts are going to be longer. Put those back in. Use the same rails so we can save some money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we might have to buy some rails here or there. Um, we do have some extras here that we're going to be using. That was the one big project mm -hmm. there. Um, the other big projects for 2021, if you want me to discuss that. In yeah, sure. Now. Yeah. Um, I'm planning on working on uh, Meadowbrook. Uh, west from Seal back to Hollow Road. Um, you can see already at the intersection, we took out some rock at the intersection for visibility and sight distance and stuff there. And we're going to be uh, improving that road with culvert pipes, tree trimming and stuff, and uh, blacktop in that road from uh, Seal back to Hollow Road on Meadowbrook. The other uh, project I have um, that I want to discuss with you guys is heritage development. <clears throat> heritage development. Um, I planned, I was going to blacktop that in there. To blacktop that in there, it was roughly between 37,000 and 41,000 to mill all the blacktop driveways in there. That was to bring a machine in, that's to grind everybody's driveways to keep them happy. So when we come blacktopping through, it's even transitioned from our road to their driveways and stuff. And it was kind of 
I can use that money somewhere else if I can. So there's a company I'm trying to deal with now, actually two, Pactum and Gorman. Um, it's called a micro seal uh, system. It's almost, it's not like they have out here in front of the town hall, but it's mixed in with Portland concrete with uh, oil emulsions and stuff, but it's as hard, if not harder than concrete and blacktop. It's supposed to last longer and everything. It's approved through chips and uh, Cornell Roads have already done testing and stuff onto it. So that's what I was planning on doing over there. It's cheaper than trying to blacktop that and spending that extra money for doing the extras for the driveways and stuff like that. So that was the one over in Heritage Development. Um, and then if I had the money and the time left over, uh, Lake Drive from Fillers Bridge, um, if I can make it as far as Kansas, I will. Um, if I can't, then um, I'm going to have to sit down with uh, Skip from Omega over there and try to figure something out with Omega over there um, and figure out where we're going to end up if we don't have enough money to go all the way to Kansas Road to do it in sections. Um, I want to start explaining also, too, just not to jump off subject, but just keep in the back of your mind about this bridge coming out here in uh, Sheltville next year. So we're going to have a lot of extra traffic now on our town roads. So instead of doing all the blacktop and having those guys tear it up once that bridge comes out, so thinking I'll do from Kansas up to save it for our tax residents and payers and stuff here. Um, and then we'll deal with that after the bridge is out with the other section. There's no sense of paving. You, you understand the follow. If I pave Lake Drive all the way through, we're going to have all that extra traffic, tractor trailers, and mega and everything coming through. So there's no sense of wasting money on that end of it next year. So we'll do from Kansas. If we have the money, Kansas out to Fiddlers or Fiddlers back towards Kansas. Okay. <clears throat> and hopefully. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to throw him a curve because no. we've talked about this this whole budget but it dawned on me tonight when i was driving in here do we know what um it costs to do the stone and that covering on the way in here uh uh you know you mean the, oil and stone the, 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 the like county the county has did done? the well, county did it's an oil and stone it's a chip seal and then they swept it and everything and then what they did it's called the fog steel uh fog seal um they put the oil that was oil on the bottom top on the of top it. <laughs> yeah because it it it's almost like a, a black like a black top. Surface. Yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering if that's expensive. There's any it's, difference in savings, or if that's more expensive. It's expensive or because you got to oil and stone. Then you got to wait for so long for the stone and oil to cure. Then you got to sweep it up, and then you got to come back. And then with the traffic and everything, it, it's expensive. It's the cost savings compared to how long it's going to last. The county's got deeper pockets than we do. I will see if this lasts. We'll try it. You know, we'll try it on the county road and see. Let them waste their money and see if it works. It works. If it don't, then we know. Okay. I mean, we, we were going to try it years ago when I came into office when uh, Theron went out on, when he was sick or whatever, but we never got a chance to try it down on Sodom. We wanted to, but we just didn't have the money because okay. back then it was expensive for the oil. I'm sure so. that there's individuals that would probably ask that question. But, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank yep. you. Just, just a personal question um, because it has nothing really to do with the budget, but um, when we put up guardrails is there a standard that the state has set as when when it's required yes for not as required the stuff I, that i don't know i haven't gotten that far yet i know as far as what i've done with paving pumpkin with the height and stuff of it i have to bring that up to dot standards Previous i mean, just to driving me, around i've sure. seen some spots that had some major really drop offs we can major drop offs and and <clears throat> and, they, and they didn't have a guardrail yep. and i was just wondering if there was a standard that we people can, were supposed to um, follow Carol or Ray might remember there there was a, a thing in here with the town wasn't it with the guardrails it had to be the old rustic or something we couldn't use yeah, it yeah. shiny or something correct me if I'm wrong that if was not, the we scenic road thing and stuff we can put it in yes the, the, yeah it, it's the the, the rusty so, box yeah, you can't put the shiny stuff in but we can't no, I'm not talking box. about the, the material I'm just saying is there a standard that if there's a major drop-off we can deem it with DOT doing the, the surveys and statistic mm -hmm. standings and stuff you know if there's accidents you know with 911 with the county to prove to put it up and stuff to justify mm -hmm. it yeah now the other important part here on this macadamy of those roads is as you see we got chips money you got pave New York money that's what we expect to get. If the governor gives us 20% less, those numbers are gonna shrink, so we can't do everything we wanted to do. We just gotta contract the length to the amount of money that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's not clear right now 
He's got another opportunity in about, uh, let's see what we are, in about three months to dock us another 20%. And I think the last yeah, the one, the the last one, one that the you one submitted. Payment, the first payment we submitted, uh, we got confirmation back on. There was 6,700 and change taken out. That, that's that 20%, like I was explaining to you guys. The second payment was 72 and change, I think. That they held back out of the 20% so far of the the submissions that we've submitted to New York State for the paved New York chips and winter recovery. So we'll see about the rest of them. And there's no guarantee we'll get the money. 80%. No, yeah, 80%, 80 of it. right now, but yeah. you don't know. Any more questions on that? The rest of it just insurance payments <coughs> and stuff. Okay, bridges, thank God we're done with bridges. Um, the only other thing on that uh, fourth page, right, is the machinery for purchases there. Oh, I didn't equipment get Equipment purchases. There. I just said bridges. Um, okay, good. The one, the, next one. the one purchase <laughs> I had in mind was the backhoe. Right now we have, uh, it's a 1999 2000, and that's when Terramac and Fermac were switching companies and merging. So our parts are 50 50. It's old, like I said, it's 1999. 2000 it's hard to get parts it's from england and everything else so that's where that came from and again like ray was saying um that's earmarked for the highway equipment reserve fund and or uh chips. chips but if we don't get the chips we can't buy it yes there's nothing you can save on that purchase <laughs> yeah um the next item that you guys go down to is the maintenance there um the maintenance um I asked for a little bit more in those, and people are going to ask why am I asking for more if we have newer equipment, because the older equipment that we have now, it's harder and harder to get those parts, and those parts that we do have and that we do find, it's more expensive to get those shipped in from the Midwest down south or overseas. That's why that maintenance came up. Hopefully, it'll start reversing um, in a couple of years here with newer trucks and newer equipment. It'll hopefully go down. So then we hit, then we hit item four, which is the snowplow season, which is January, February, March is designated as the months of this snowplow thing, and you can see the people and the wages, and that's all what we talked about before. And uh, on the next page, page six, is where we have the wingmen, the seasonal winter yep. people. That's in there. Yeah, that's the last item right in the middle. Yeah, we did the 500 hours instead of doing, you know, one or two people. We just did a total hours. Because we don't know. Because you don't know. And on that, um, you'll see also with the uh, salt, I went up with the salt, and you're going to ask why we went up in the salt when the price of salt went down. Because if the price of salt goes up next year, I can stockpile that shed and uh, the sand shed with salt. Now we're doing the uh, county roads and stuff, so we're going to need a little bit of extra material. Right now, it's uh, we went from sixty-four dollars and change a ton last year to fifty-eight and change a ton this year off the county contract. Yeah. So with the, that big decrease, um, I had three hundred tons delivered. I have another hundred ton coming tomorrow. That shed will be filled right to the door, starting of the season right now. So as of tomorrow it's maxed out so if we use that and the price of salt goes up next year i'll fill that shed and the sand shed so this way we'll have that filled and if the price goes up we'll use that first before the price you see what i'm saying so we'll save there yeah. um sand i'm not sure on sand this year because um with dc with the regulations with the gravel banks and everything everybody's going out um we had vondaleaf had the bid uh to the end of this year he might have enough sand for us till the end of this year but he probably won't be bidding on to it so gravel banks are being far and few in between with the the sand and when they do have it it's a more of a coarser sand it's like a p-stone sand it's not an ice and uh road control sand so that's going to be harder and harder to find hmm. yeah the other thing to note about three years ago before we went with the county bid for salt, or the county bid for salt, in case you didn't know, we were paying $92 a ton. Huh. So the county got involved, so all the county highway guys can go for it, and it's been dropping, like he said. So 
Our our salt is coming. Um, have you guys recently been on the Northway going north? Those buildings on the right hand side, those big, huge, massive buildings on the right hand side, going north towards Albany. That's our salt. That's all salt in those buildings. That's Eastern uh, Salt Company. It's coming out of the city in Boston. They're storing it. They have all of uh, this half of the Northeast for salt this year, and they're the ones who have Dutchess, Columbia, Ulster, and Orange Counties bid right now. That's why they put those buildings up. So we've been working on trying to save wherever we could. Yeah. yeah. So that's that. And the next part now are benefits. Um, Social Security, workers' comp, all those numbers I get on workers' comp. Since we have more expense due to the highway kind of workers, we charge 75% of the bill to that, 25% to the general fund. It's just a split. I added a new item because we have unemployment that we gotta pay. We're self-insured, and you don't know how much we're gonna pay. Currently, I have about three to $4,000 of unemployment. I can't win. They just refuse to accept anything. I, anybody can ask for unemployment, and they'll approve it. Even if you have another job, I don't know. It's crazy, but that's the way it is. So I put unemployment in to cover that because I don't know where it'll occur. We never had this before. And Ray, you said you were gonna add a new line item for the safety, for the uh, OSHA bloodborne. Oh yeah, that's in, that's in uh, general fund. Okay. That's in general fund. Then the next section is uh, medical coverage, hospitalization, MVP. And the rates went up about 7%. Not each one went up exactly the same amount, but these are the latest rates that we got. I gave you a copy of the uh, spreadsheet that they came off of from uh, MVP. So it's the same plan. And uh, we just pack in the number of people and take care of whether they pay 15% or 10%, depending on when they joined our workforce. And it's just pure math. You can see everybody who's covered here. Same thing with the HRA on the bottom of page eight. It, there's only two categories there, single and family. And well, single or other. And then they're split up and you can see who's in which, which category. The vision is the CSEA contract. And again, we have the split between 85, 90, and 100% the town pays. And who the different people are under the different categories there. Those, you can see, uh, now, just as a point of information, the vision plan changes in, gen in July, the rates. Uh, this year, they're holding up, uh, for this plan cycle, they're holding them the same, but there's no guarantee. But if you go to the next page, where you see the dental, it went from $111 to $120 at the change of the year. So we had to keep that into account but the people are still getting the same benefits. And then I have uh, under other employee benefits, people can buy back their vacation days, their comp time, sick time, and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty much cooled off, but we had the first time it was allowed, um, it cost us about 20,000 and it wasn't in the budget, so. Now it's 5,000 5, or less. Mm. I never know who's going to do what. And then the next one is the highway budget for the uh, debt service for the two trucks that are coming in that I mentioned previously. And. Uh, That's all the expense side. Anybody have any questions on the expense side? And we'll go into the revenue side if you Which? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the, the revenue side, property taxes, that's strictly mathematical that comes out. We, I increased the Dutchess County snow plowing to reflect the extra length of, land, of hollow road that we're doing. So that essentially said from each payment, instead of being what, like 28 or 30,000, it went up to 42,000 each half year. So we've got some extra money there. But of course, what's nice is we had to go on those roads anyways to get yeah. to our roads. So it's, yeah, it took a little salt, but the truck, gasoline, the people time, it's a wash. So that's what that was. Interest in earnings, I don't know. Then pick a number. If you can tell me a better number, I'd appreciate it. I just sort of look and see what we got coming in and going. It's not much anymore. Then the insurance, this is money that we get uh, and from the other um, shared services, county, uh, uh, town around us that share in the mini excavator. So we pay the whole expense and then they reimburse us for this. This is the amount they reimburse us. Here's the paved New York and the restricted New York. Those are the ones I told you about. And then the following one is the winter recovery. And let's see, ne next page is uh, the 100,000 from unexpended balance from the highway fund to help balance all the shortcomings that are coming out from, you know, as I said previously, sales tax and everything else, plus the addition of the little over a hundred thousand dollars for the two trucks mm -hmm. and uh, the, the hundred and four fifteen thousand for the library which was added in so that, that, that was a big big impact next year it's already in the budget so the the calculations won't change that much they're in there already but we got to get them started because now they're starting so that's the whole highway thing. Does anybody have any other comments or decisions or something? I have one comment about next week, but I'll wait if we're done with okay. this. If we're done with this. Well, I just want to know if we're done with it. The only other things I have are eight codes, and I don't know if you want to discuss those tonight that come out of it, or if you want to wait until the next workshop meeting to deal with the highway. Well, might as well deal with the highway now. So. Okay. All right. Um, the one thing in there is uh, the money for the education for the highway superintendent for me to go to Cornell schools for the highway schooling. Yep. It's uh, three days. It's Monday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's with uh, Cornell's professors and uh, New York State and those guys with uh, the, all the highway superintendents in New York State. Updated laws, chips, paved New York, wind recovery updates, uh, improvement on roads. Um, road building, bridges, uh, truck replacements, yep. purchasing and all that stuff, bonds and everything. It's three days of uh, schooling and it's very, very good. That's how I learned to <laughs> write those grants, two out of the three that we've gotten. It was up there from those guys. So it's valuable stuff that we've been, I've been learning and dealing with four years, five years and you're a road master and that's good on your resume. Yeah. The, the the only the reason I put it I didn't put it in because I've been trying to deal with association of towns to find out what they're doing. That's right. And I have not got a definitive answer from Jerry up there. Okay. Uh, the same thing with the New York City one. Okay. That's down in uh, February. Yeah. And I don't even know if the assessor ones and the court ones are going to be given because they're all generally under the auspices of the Association of Towns or in cooperation with them. So, you know, do you put it in or do you take it out? I took some of them out. I took the one for New York City out. I took the one out here. The judges I took out, they said, no, we got to have it back. We may have the class. I don't know what to do. There, there, there's no rationale, and I cannot get a definitive when statement. Is that, when is that? training usually take place for which june for june the one he's talking june. about june 
June. For, uh, so it would be Cornell. June 2021? Yeah. I think we put it in. Yeah. Okay. Well, March, just, well, March is usually when they start sending out the registrations yeah. to see for participants yeah. to start lining what's up the, the worst thing it gets? Yeah, the worst that happens is we budget for it and then we don't spend the money. No, so, I know, but put it back yeah, the, I understand. The, the, I understand. the budget's going up and up yeah, as I understand. we add things. That's, that's my only comment. I'm, yeah. I'm not negative against it. I just can't confirm that it's going to be or not be. Yeah. You know, obviously, um, we, we don't know what's going to be next, but, you know, <laughs> the reality is, you know, December, January, February being the high flu season is more likely not to happen. June, hopefully, <laughs> it would be more likely to yeah. happen. Yeah. Right. And if nothing else, I mean, they may do virtual like everything else is yeah. gone virtual, which would be a cost savings in, in a sense. Itself, anyway. yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, as I said, it's. I just don't know. What, what, what is the amount that w would normally go in for that? I'll look at, I'm looking up this year. Seven last year was or this year was seven hundred for the convention. I think it was, I'm and then two hundred fifty dollars for the travel and meals and hotel. You stay right there on the, the hotel campus. next to the campus. Yeah, I think it was seven seven hundred dollars for the convention or classes. Oh, here it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I had seven hundred dollars to do it for this year. And then it was what two hundred fifty dollars for travel or oh, something. No, that included everything. Yeah. Meals well, and well, we had two hundred for travel last year too, and there's only well, fifty now. Yeah. yeah, well, that was other kind of travel. Okay. Whatever the delivery is, I mean, he has to have it. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, I think the training's worth it. Um, so we'll, but in the end, we'll save money with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll put the seven hundred back there. Travel to Cornell. I, I just told you why. Yeah, thank you. And you know, most of the travel that's being done nowadays, he uses the town truck, town trucks, and all. So mm -hmm. that's why it went down. Previously, Theron didn't use the town trucks; he used to drive his own car. Yeah. So that's why I went from two hundred to fifty. There's some there in case something's got to be done, no. but you know. It's not a big fortune. So I tried to be realistically cutting where it seemed to make sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the only one there because there's not much other. All right. Um, and then the only other thing I'm asking for um, is more hours for my uh, clerk, up to uh, 25 hours a week for 2021. Uh, I don't support it. I support it. I I think what's we, we're on the right track of correcting a lot of stuff that's going on in there, and, and it's going more efficient. And it's also given Todd some time to work on some of these other, especially next this coming year, work on hopefully some other grants and stuff that we need to do to get these projects done. We're talking the difference of five hours. She's at I'm nineteen. Sorry, she's she's 19, at nineteen hours now. Hours, I'm asking I'm for twenty-five. 25 um, a week in essence she's been donating time doing stuff at this point so i i, I think it's that sitting in there and going back and you know spending enough time in the highway department seeing what's going on there it's we can't it's apples and oranges it's apples and oranges with what the previous uh person did in there um left Kind of a uh, stuff that wasn't on wasn't taken care of, and I think it's just underrated at 19 hours. My, my only concern is that we need to start looking at areas to trim, and we didn't trim anything tonight. No, we kept on adding on to it. So, well, I understand I'm concerned that, but I think in in my I understand where you come from, and there's areas that I definitely feel that we can trim on, and I, I'm sure we we'll all have our areas. I mean, safety items are always something that I'll, I'll you know, we got to spend no matter what. But some things are wish lists, and we don't necessarily need to spend it this year, especially right. since this year is such an off year. But I think the benefit that outweighs of giving us to try to find other ways of saving money in there, uh, that it, I think it, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a cost, yes, but at the end of the day, it's going to save us getting us possibly more uh, having Todd be more efficient to get stuff done like we did this year. We were able to be fairly, um, let's be honest, we got a lot done with with 
you know, working around certain the roads, budgets, the equipment, roads, mm. equipment. We, this is stuff that hasn't been taken care of for a long time, well, and well, he stayed fairly close to the budget. Yeah, well, some of the reason that things weren't done in the past was well, I'm not Ferry that. didn't I'm want to do them because I asked him, and I did not restrict him, and he uh, didn't want to right, do I'm them. Not, I'm, not, I'm not pointing fingers at you. I'm not saying No, no, no. I just want the you point to is that he's doing it now because Theron didn't do it. Exactly, exactly, and that's, so. the, that's the point. So we, we kind of came behind, and, like, equipment-wise, we sat through. You know, not having some sort of plan. I said many times we have a one-year, a two-year, a five-year, and a ten-year plan with stuff. Um, you know, unfortunately, sooner or later you got to pay the piper on something, and it looks good what Theron did on numbers for years, but it's not. It's it's hurting us now. Um, well, so it, I, let me just. It has nothing to do with Theron. It has to do with yeah. the highway clerk's position and the efficiency that, that she's doing there with the paperwork and, and the process no, no, we're doing that. over there and, and trying to clean up files and trying to update things to the 20th century, yeah. you know, trying to scan everything and, and trying to organize all of our old files that are upstairs that are like here, you know, and they're all over the place. When people call and ask for something or need something, we're running around trying to find this because it's not centrally located or it's not scanned on the computer on a file where we just pull it up readily. And then with the time sheets and, and clocks and everything else that with the issues, the fuel master system's gone down. She's been patiently waiting with those guys, dealing with them every single day, trying to do that. I mean, it's not just answering the phone, emails, and sure. hello, welcome to the town of Clinton sure. and the highway department. I mean, sure. there's a lot of other things that she does above and beyond, you know, her scope of work, I feel. There's been a great deal of work. Oh, yeah that's been done to increase the oversight, to create reports that we didn't have, to go back and if not fix the reports that were there, at least in, move forward so that we've got accountability on every aspect uh, that wasn't there to, before. And like I, I said, I'm not asking for a pay raise for her. I'm just asking for 25 hours. So, so, uh, so can like I, I said, I'm not asking for pay raises. No, I'm just asking here, for 25 here's, hours. Here's what's happening. Melissa, Forget the name. The, the clerk is working 22 or 23 hours a week. Plus. She is working at home. She works her 19, and I can verify that she's, she's working at home to get this done. Yeah. And she's been doing that for months now. So, and I think we need to she's not asking to get reimbursed, and she's not asking for mm -hmm. sympathy or anything like that. What I, what I will furnish the uh, and I will furnish the board and and everyone is the list of what she's doing now, what April did, and if we don't agree that she is going to get those additional hours, what will not be done? Okay. So, can we also take into account like <clears throat> I see both sides of this. I understand that we've got to cut places and we've got a you know we're in a situation where we're losing revenue because of corona and all these other things well not only that but we're already talking about 20 percent clips <laughs> yeah every, ex exactly every so person. if she went up six hours a week that then she'd go from 18 one i'm not she sorry the position would go from 18,140 to 23,868 but if we met in the middle at 22 hours which we think is about what she's working every week anyway when she's working from home it would be twenty one thousand and three dollars would would 22 hours a week be acceptable a anything's better than nothing okay you know it's just information so when we talk about it next week yeah. we can well, at this point i don't support the change unless you can give me some hard evidence to show me that she's I'll not doing duplicate for work i'll give you the evidence and then everyone fine. can decide fine what but, gets done and what doesn't i mean i've been here i've worked with lynn Tompkins, april all of them very closely so. but the stuff the, the the problem is this stuff wasn't getting done when 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 todd took over the as a highway superintendent and nancy and i went in there on a regular basis to see what wasn't being what hasn't been done i mean it, it, it I, I was i was astonished there there's books that were never touched never nothing was kept track of inside the buildings how if we were audited there would be potential issues would have been I, th I don't think this is the place to talk about what hasn't been done but we'll give you uh, we'll give you that's right details. as of right okay. now i said i'm not 
Okay. Change it. Well, it doesn't need to be unanimous. We can figure it. We'll oh, have I, a discussion. I expect that. <laughs> <laughs> Three out, vote two, or one. I know that. I'm not worried about that part. I'm just voicing my opinion. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're changing numbers, why don't we put in the 22 hours just so we have a number to work off of, and then we'll, we'll adjust it at the next second week. meeting. Yeah, yeah. Not next week's, but the yeah. second meeting. Next week's. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. You got anything? I don't have anything else. Anybody held any other? Yeah. Well, I. You, yeah, that's right. You I want. I just wanted to understand why the 115 from the library is suddenly counted towards our tax cap because it's not supposed to be. They have to do their own tax cap. Their 115 doesn't fall under ours. Our calculation. When I put it in my budget, I put my total expense in it. Well, it's so for the, the last equation up in Albany that I get the spreadsheet that mm -hmm. comes down doesn't give me an option to take it out. So this is the thing, though. The law says that basically if the library has its own independent governing board, which it does, yep. and the budget is comprised from revenues generated by a tax levy of a municipality that the, that is the municipality is collecting it on the library's behalf, the library has their own tax cap, and that 115 does not count towards our tax cap. I called the Office of State well, Controller no. yesterday to find, well, I just want to get it right no, no, before no. we talk next week. No, no. Last year, when I was putting it below the bottom of the line, like the fire districts, you said it's got to be in the budget, in the town budget. So this year, I said, okay, I'll put it in the town budget. I can take it out and put it back down the bottom yeah, again. I said that from two years ago, that they became their own taxing entity, and I was told no. They, well, that's a different thing. They are not their own taxing authority it because- should be included in no, ours. No, Look at the state law and call the state controller. They are not a taxing authority. They, the voters, decided yeah. that we have to give 115, that right. we have to appropriate that. For our budget. From our budget, but that 115 doesn't count towards our tax cap. They have their own. So when they go out for another 414 to raise it whenever they decide to do that, they have to do their own tax cap calculation on what they asked for in the 414. Hmm. I called the state controller. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. No, and I'm, they, they no agreed. I, I'm just saying I questioned it two years ago, yeah. and I was told that it had to be in our budget. So that's why I'm kind well, of the confused 115, as to why. The 115 does obviously come out of our budget, mm -hmm. but it just doesn't count towards the calculation for the tax cap. That I, get what I, well, I, I got to find out how to, how to take it out of the form that I get from Albany. Okay. But the thing is, is you've taken it out of the form that you have from Albany. Cause when I talked to them yesterday, the last three years, that 115 was not included in our that's tax right, cap calculation. That's because it was a below the line. As okay. I told well you, then like fire if that's districts. the way that you get it done. Then that's the way it gets it I mean, done. That's but. what I was doing for all these years. And you, you said it's got to be in well, the town budget, and I put it in the town budget. Well, Did no. You? What I was saying is that there was a budget last year where it was at zero when, when you handed it to us. The 115 wasn't even in there. It just said That's zero. That's right. It's below the line on the summary And I sheet. asked you about it. That wasn't how it was explained. I, I'm sorry if I was confused, okay. but I'm not confused right now okay. that it shouldn't count towards the tax cap calculation. It's not supposed, and that helps us. This is a this is a positive. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm I'm not disputing it. I'm just trying to accommodate what I thought you asked for. Well, okay. <laughs> I guess. I mean, last year I just saw that it said zero in the in the budget. And That's right. So it it looked like we weren't there was no one fifteen, like it didn't exist. Oh. And I I asked about it. Maybe I didn't understand the answer. I don't know. That could have been my fault. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, here, let me just show you right now. So we. All right. Well, <coughs> Yeah, we don't need to argue about it tonight. Let's no, no, just no, no, clarify no. and figure. Well, yeah, out. I just think it will help us for next week if see. if at one fifteen. Hmm. Yeah, I saw that you were doing see, that. Here's, here is the two fire districts. Which well, one? Right here. Oh, right here, right here. Okay. Two and then you have the library there. Right, and that's below <coughs> our line. This is our line. Okay. So I do collect the money. Yeah. I do give them a check. No, because but it's not in the town budget. Okay, so then this is correct, so it shouldn't count towards the tax gap there, the way you have this. Yeah, 
but everybody said I have to. But this have is it the 2021 budget. It's not in the budget. These numbers are not in my budget. I know, but if you're saying that, you're showing me 2021. Yeah. So this is not in the budget. So then why are you saying in your letter to us that the 115 is what put uh, us over the tax cap it's if it's not there. in your budget? It's right here. It's not here. Oh, because I'm sorry. You're looking at 2019 there. Okay, yeah. So I then it should be there. You're right. You're right about that. Okay. It should be. So it's below the line. Yes. Okay. You sh yes, it should be. I have no objection, but I just was trying to accommodate. Yeah, and I, I when I saw it, I thought, well, That'll help us with the tax cap oh, yeah. for next week when we start talking about yeah, this. Yes, because when it's below the line, like yeah. I don't add school uh, fire districts, I yeah. don't add all these other things in because I collect physically the money. Yeah. I collect the We're, money for the county. It's not in my budget. I yes. collect the money and we give it to them. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we had it right. Yeah, so we'll have to redo yeah. how the numbers crank through. I, I don't know what it'll mean. But I mean, it should give us some space yeah a little more yeah, space yeah cool okay Great. yeah sorry for the confusion no i am too <laughs> I, I obviously misunderstood last year when i asked yeah. that question so i was just trying to be accommodating that's yeah. all okay any other further discussion no I, oh. and i will give the i'll follow up whenever on yep that one piece okay whenever so uh okay uh we're going to adjourn the town board meeting and make a motion to adjourn is there a second second all in favor aye, aye. motion aye. carried see you all next thursday seven o'clock same time same place thank you okay thank you